Welcome back, it's me Lou, and I'm here for a different style of review. Um, so normally I do a, an unboxing and reviews of the action figure, but for today, I'm going to forego the unboxing, and this will be strictly a mint on card review. So um, if you're expecting me to open these figures and review them, I apologize, I'm not going to do that. So if, if that's what you're looking for, <laughs> you might just want to carry on. Uh, but if you want to you know, stick around and hear me... Um, discuss these figures in detail to the best that I could while they still remain on the package you know feel free to I invite you to do that so right off the bat um, these are the new Star Wars Black Series Clone Wars figures that are celebrating 50 years of Lucasfilm these are a Target store exclusive and I'm pretty stoked to have these um, to be honest when Hasbro debuted these on social media sometime back. You know, I, I saw them and I thought they were really cool, but at the same time, it's kind of a bittersweet thing because I was excited about them, but I was kind of bitter about it because I knew the chances of me trying to find these on shelves at Target were going to be very difficult. Um, as most of you know, during this past year, Target's gotten, you know, a number of exclusives, including like G.I. Joe, uh, some Masters of the Universe stuff, and it's like it, impossible to get your hands on. It's They sell out right away online during the pre-orders, and finding them on shelves is like, good luck. Um, and these were, you know, this line of special figures, the Lucasfilm 50, 50 year anniversary ones, right when I saw them online, um, when I saw the photos, I'm like, I kind of gave up. I'm like, I'm not going to bother with them. Uh, and it was it was kind of disappointing for me because in all of my years of collecting Star Wars figures and toys, um, the Clone Wars era is probably my favorite period of time collecting Star Wars uh, action figures. For me, it's very memorable. And it was a very different time for collecting Star Wars action figures. And I'll go into that in a little bit. But for now, um, I was able to snag two of the figures in the four-way, in the four-figure assortment. So there's four figures. Uh, in the Target exclusive Clone Wars wave, there's um, Clone Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, Clone Wars Anakin Skywalker, Clone Wars Arc, Tre Arc Trooper Echo, and Clone Pilot Hawk. So I managed to find both of these, and surprisingly these were both at different stores. Um, I had to run into my office this morning, and on my way I passed a couple of Targets. And like a good collector, I'll hit up all the stores like Targets and Walmarts on my way to work just to see if there's any new figures put out or any new toys or just anything in general. And I came across Clone Pilot Hawk. And I was like, it was the only figure of this wave that was still on the pegs. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was really surprised because I didn't, I wasn't expecting to find these on shelves at all, period. And I saw this, I immediately snatched it up and I was really excited because this package, this really takes me back to like 13 years ago. And it blows my mind to think that this style of package is like 13 years old. So I got this and I was really excited and I went to the office, hung out with co-workers, did some work. And then on my way home, I'm like, I'll hit up the other targets that I, I didn't hit up on the way in. And I stopped by another target. <clears throat> And it's surprisingly, and surprisingly, this was actually the target that's like, just like a minute away from my house. And for some reason, I just skipped that one this morning. But on the way back from work, I'm like, I'll stop by there before I get home. And I found this. I found um, Arc Trooper Echo. And it blew my mind that I found this figure at my target. My target is hit up by collectors like hard. And uh, I mean, I live. I, I I I probably live closest of all the collectors I know to it. I mean, it's just like a minute away from my house, and I've been very fortunate because I'm normally the one that grabs all the figures first. But I've lost out many a times to other collectors, and this was like later in the afternoon, and this was the only figure from that wave that was still on the shelves. And I'm like, I can't believe people passed up on this. Um, like for me, of all the four figures in the in the wave, it's like I want the, the troopers the most. The Anakin and the Obi-Wan, they look really cool, but you know, I already have a couple of Obi-Wans and a couple of Anakins in my Black Series collection. But when it comes to like Stormtroopers and Clone Troopers, I can never have enough, um, especially the specialized characters. I love the specialized characters a lot, um, and I, 
for me, I am just so excited to have this this character, um, especially Echo is really cool. I don't remember Hawk uh, from the animation, but Echo's awesome. He's he's still around. He's even in the new Bad Batch cartoon. But I love Arc Troopers and man, this package it really brings me back. I'm really excited to have this. Uh, so. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is not going to be an unboxing interview. Um, I can't bring myself to open this and take it off the card just yet. If I happen to stumble upon a second copy of this figure, <clears throat> I'll, I'll totally open this and review it. But for now, um, for me, this is about the nostalgia. I, as much as I want, I'd like to like take the figure out and display it or play with it or whatever. Um, this is really hard to come by in my neck of the woods and. Uh, I really have the feels when it comes to this card. Like I know, like a lot of collectors, they're really stoked on like the vintage collection. Um, and anytime they release the Black Series figures on the retro cards, but for me, it's like I've been there, done that. And <clears throat> the Clone Wars period of collecting, it's it's not that it was Star Wars was dead at the time, but it wasn't as um, I guess as an in fashion as it is now, like collecting Star Wars is really in fashion now. I mean, I'll, Star Wars collecting toy action figure collecting is always hot period, but it goes through like highs and lows and peaks and valleys. And right now we're kind of like either at the peak or we're getting up there. Uh, the last maybe like four years, especially with the black series and all the different exclusive we'll be getting from like San Diego and in uh, and, and retail exclusives, it's been hot. And then when you, add the pandemic on top of everything some figures are even harder to come by and the mandalorian's big so like star wars is kind of going through this almost like renaissance kind of period but when the original clone wars figures came out it was kind of like you almost hear like the crickets chirping um for one it was the clone wars animation a lot of people didn't really warm up to it until much later you know maybe until like season three or four um, I remember when the original toys came out, it was for me, it was easy to find because collectors, they weren't too hot or keen on the animation designs and, you know, they didn't really latch onto the cartoon yet. And people still wanted the, the classic characters and the, you know, at the time it was known as the legacy collection, but man, this figure, it's cool. So, um, looking at this, we have Arc Trooper Echo. And for those of you who don't know, ARC is actually a, an acronym. I believe it stands for Advanced Reconnaissance Commando. So the more specialized troopers that aren't just plain infantry, um, you know, they're kind of have these more, I don't know, suit. They have more, they have more stuff going on with their armor. Um, you know, they have rank insignias. They have pauldrons. They have, you know, these battle commas. They have all sorts of pouches, holsters. They have the helmet with the view ranger so it's kind of like you know these guys are very specialized they're almost like one man army corps in a sense they're often field leaders um and if you watched the original clone wars cartoon you'll remember when they introduced echo and like fives and some of the other clones and throughout the life of the tv show some of these characters really rose to prominence you know and also especially in their rank and echo is one of those characters and it's, it's, it's crazy when I think that this character is in the Disney Plus show, The Bad Batch. And, you know, he was introduced so long ago. But uh, the figure's cool. Um, he has his Phase 2 helmet with the rangefinder. He comes with his uh, long-range rifle, his blaster, and he has two pistols. Um, I believe the figure has... So on his battle comma, he has two pouches in the front, and I think behind them he has two holsters, one for each pistol. Um, his character likeness it kind of resembles Tamora Morrison from Attack of the Clones, and he has the um, hand stamp on his um, chest armor. I think that was given to him by Rex, if I remember correctly. And then we have a character portrait. It looks like it could be a still from the animation. And the thing that really sold me on this is just the packaging. Uh, if you collected during this period of time, this is a very iconic card that was that maybe lasted maybe I want to say at least two years. And on the back, the back is really disappointing. Um, you just get the logo and it says Arc Trooper Echo, and there's this giant waste of space where they just talk about celebrating 50 years of Lucasfilm, which is an honorable thing, but it's it's, it's honestly it's a, it's a waste of space. 
And it's kind of weird that they choose, um, you know, the Clone Wars to celebrate the 50 years of Lucasfilm in terms of a Target exclusive. And it's a great figure. It pissed me off, though, when I rang this up at the counter and it's like... Twenty-four ninety-five or whatever. So it's like you're paying five bucks more than the average Black Series figure. But something like this, I could I could stomach this just because this guy is getting a crap load of accessories. He comes with two pistols, the, the, you know, his blaster, the rifle, the removable helmet, the, the body armor, the battle comma, and I'm like I could easily stomach paying twenty-five bucks for this figure. But it 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 pains me because I really want to open it because the figure is badass. But you know the card is 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 to me the card is equally as important to me as the the figure just because I get nostalgia really bad for this time period and it's awesome so let's talk about clone pilot hawk now this is a figure that when I paid <laughs> 25 bucks for I was like f that this is like the kid the figure looks cool um there's a lot of reefs with, we, with the clones you know they're reusing a lot of the body and stuff but this guy has a very unique helmet since he's a pilot and uh, it's like I couldn't I couldn't believe this guy just wouldn't ring, ring up as like 19 or 20 dollars because it's, he's so almost bare minimum versus this guy. This guy is like a black series figure but like the lux with all the stuff going on and then you get something like this where it's like okay well, let's give you a let's give you a blaster and I don't think his helmet even comes off which is disappointing. But the package is the same. this is the Clone Wars card very reminiscent of what we got like in 2008. Um, a nice character portrait of the care of Clone Pilot Hawk, as I've stated before. Um, I don't recall this guy from the animation. Uh, there, there were so many clones in the Clone Wars cartoon, and uh, he doesn't strike me as one of the more memorable characters. I don't know if you remember which episode he was in, or what purpose he served, or whatever, just you know, leave a comment below. Um, and more of the same it's disappointing it's this you know clone pilot hawk and 50 years of lucas so i, I don't want to feel i don't want to feel like i'm ripping you guys off by not opening these figures but so i'll like try to add on as much as possible to this video review to make it seem like it's worth your time um so since we're on the subject of this era of collecting star wars figures uh, the, specifically Star Wars, the Clone Wars, and these card packages. It's only fair that I should um, show some of the original figures from that time period. So if you if if you weren't collecting Star Wars figures during this time period, or maybe if you weren't even born yet, um, so we got these. These are Star Wars, the Clone Wars. These are the original three and three quarter figures that came out, and I believe these coincided. I don't think they coincided with the television show. I think they coincided with, um, I believe, the movie. So, yeah, if, if you're unfamiliar with the Clone Wars, there was actually a Clone Wars animated feature that was released in the theaters before it was um, on, uh, what was it, Cartoon Network? And that story was about, I think, um, uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin were tasked with rescuing Jabba's baby, Rhoda. And in that in that in that movie, Anakin also got his Padawan, um, Ahsoka. So that was our introduction to Ahsoka. The story was I don't know. It's, I thought it, I enjoyed it. I know a lot of people aren't very fond of that animated feature, but for what it was and for what we had at the time, I was excited. It was a couple of years since Revenge of the Sith um, was in the theaters, so for me, just any excuse to go to the movie theaters to watch Star Wars on the big screen, it was awesome. And this kind of shows you where Star Wars was at at the time. So I, we went to the midnight screening of the um, Clone Wars movie, and at, at my movie theater, it was like it was dead. I think there was there was probably under a dozen people in the theater, and I think probably how was I don't know maybe like 200, 200 plus people. And I don't know, it just seemed kind of disappointing. But I think at the time, people were just burned out on Star Wars, um, as a lot of people know. You know the prequels. I, I love the prequels. I think they're great. And there's a generation of kids who are now adults who grew up on the prequels before they even were introduced to the original series. And for them, that's Star Wars. But for older folk, um, you know, the prequels, they left a bad taste in their mouth. And, uh, you know, you go to a Star Wars midnight screening for a new movie, and if no one's there, that kind of gives you the, 
the temperature of where people are at with Star Wars. And on top of that, I think Walmart and Toys R Us might have did midnight releases for these specific toys, which is where I got them. I got these at Walmart. And I remember getting to Walmart and it's like the figures were out on the pegs and it looked like no one really even bothered looking through them because, you know, and honestly, people didn't really care. Um, I cared. I mean, I had to get these. I mean, this is, even says right here, this is the first day of issue. So, uh, with the first wave assortment, if, you know, that were released opening week, you know, the stores that got these, you know, on time and released them on day one, some of the figures had these day one stickers. So it's kind of proof that it's kind of like your badge of honor. Like, you know, I kind of like am hardcore. I got my figures on the first day of the release. Which is kind of a nerd thing, but if you're a collector, it's kind of special to you because it just shows how much you're invested into these toys emotionally. And I remember getting this, and it's you know, it's it was cool. And then so that's the Captain Rex one. So one thing I'm kind of surprised with, um, but at the same time I'm not disappointed, is that Rex was actually a day one release for the original Clone Wars uh, figure figure line. And it's, it just took me by surprise that they gave us Arc Trooper Echo instead of giving us Rex. Because it only make more sense to give you Rex since he was actually a day one release of the figure. But we've already gotten Rex, I think, once or twice already. And, uh, you know, I think people just complain. It's like, oh, we, we already got that figure. You're just you know, trying to double dip and recard it. Which I wouldn't have a problem with, but I know some people would. Um, but yeah... I love this figure. I think these the Clone Wars figures. I think it received a mixed bag of reviews from um, fans and collectors because the character designs and the sculpts they're based off the animation models, so they're not realistic. They're more on the cartoony side, so their proportions are kind of kind of off. Like their heads look really big, and their eyes, and uh, they just look more like the animation models. And I'm cool with that because, you know, that's what I'm watching. I'm watching the cartoon. The toy should look like the cartoon. And that brings me to my problem with these figures. And I've said this before with some of the um, Black Series figures that are based off of the animation models. It's like, I get it why they make these look realistic. But for me, as a fan of the original source material, uh, as a fan of the original source material, I'd like to see the action figures portrayed as how they looked like on the show. So for me, it's like... It's cool that this looks like actor Tamora Morrison and he's realistic looking, but I'm OG. You know, I, I, st I was with this when the, the cartoon wasn't popular. I want the, uh, a figure of the actual cartoon model. So give me the more cartoony head, the more cartoony proportions. And if you want, down the road, give us the realistic figure. You know, they'll make twice the money because they'll have people double dip. And, I don't know, it just bothers me a little because I know with the Marvel Legends line, Hasbro is really good at providing two versions of characters. You know, they like to satisfy the, the fans of the Marvel movies, and they also love to satisfy the fans of the comic books. So, you know, we get both versions. You'll get Marvel Cinematic Cap, and then you also get Marvel Comic Book Cap. Whereas with Star Wars The Black Series, right now they're just giving us realistic interpretations of the characters. And for me, as a fan of the original cartoon... You know, I really want the cartoon version of the figures. I mean, only time will tell. Um, you know, I might be, I might sound, come off sounding kind of like, you know, like a snob or whatever. But I mean, if if you're around during that time period and you're one of those people that stuck with the cartoon since day one when everyone else thought it was crap, and you stuck with it, and when they ended it, and everyone was talking about how much they loved Ahsoka at the end and how great the series was, it's kind of like you know, I knew that from the beginning. You know, it didn't take me like three seasons in to win me over and I kind of I just have such fond memories of this period of Star Wars you know they gave us new adventures in the cartoon new characters it really expanded on the mythos and the lore and for me it's like all that's represented just because of this stupid card and I that's the only reason why I can't open these you know my, my memories and my passion for Star Wars during that time period is this this is so great it's like man if I could just go back in time and relive this era it it was the best. They gave us so many characters, so many accessories, so many vehicles. We were like spoiled until no end. But at the same time, that's that that could be one of the reasons why uh, we don't get as much as we used to, um, because it's not like these things would fly off the shelves. And you know, when big chains like Toys R Us or Walmart are stuck with like 
the Confederate droid carrier for like, I don't know, two years or two or three years and they can't sell it at full retail and they have to mark it down, you know, down to like 30%. It's like there's something not clicking there. So then, of course, the toy companies have to rethink their strategy and then, you know, they don't give us vehicles anymore because they don't sell. They cut back on figures because they don't all don't sell. So, it's, I don't know, it's kind of a weird give and take, push and pull kind of deal. All right, moving on. Um, did I show Anakin? So here's Anakin from uh, the day one, the first Clone Wars wave, and here's Obi Wan day one. Uh, so there's actually black ser modern interpretations of these figures in the Black series. That's part of this wave of Target exclusive toys. Um, I don't have them yet, so I don't know if they come with all the fun accessories like these do. I doubt it. Like Obi Wan here, he comes with a. Uh, now this is a clone trooper um, swappable head. It's not a helmet, unfortunately, that he could put on top of this. So for this figure, he could swap the head out so he could pretend he's wearing the commander helm. And then you can give him the jetpack. And Obi-Wan's decked out in his clone armor, which is kind of his trademark throughout the entire Clone Wars series. It's really cool. Anakin, likewise, he's kind of wearing that armor. And it's very reminiscent of the Darth Vader armor. You know, if you look at Vader's upper armor piece, it's essentially the same thing, almost like what Anakin has. And Anakin comes with, I think they're like, I don't know, this like weird rappelling or just ropes or something and a missile launcher. Yeah, this is, this was such a fun period of time. And this is what I think, um, this is where they really dropped the ball with these anniversary figures that... I get it, it's Lucasfilm's 50th anniversary, but it's such a waste of giant space. They easily could have condensed this and put it up here in the corner. And instead, they should have just been full, go full retro and just give us something like this. Like on the old school figs, you know, here's Anakin Skywalker. This is figure number one in the set. Nice fig photography. It shows is what his uh, toy feature is. And they give you a nice meaty bio here and description of the characters. It just doesn't say Anakin is a Jedi in three different languages. You know, it just straight to the point. It's like a nice recap of Anakin in the movie and all that cool fun stuff. And what's even funner is that you get this. I don't see this enough on toys anymore where they give you the lineup of all the different figures you could get in the wave. You know, if I'm a child and I get this action figure, it makes me like stoked and like I start jonesing for all these other figures. But this is a waste of space. You just get this empty where it just says Lucasfilm 50, which is, it's cool, it's honorable, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, if you want to go full, you know, retro, just give us all this. You know, for people that lived this era in time, it's cool. For people who missed out, it's a flashback for them and a chance to like for them to like have a little piece of history and see what it was like to collect toys in a very different time and space. And it's nuts to think this was copywritten 2008. I mean, we're in 2021. Man, that's like a, like a lifetime ago. Um, <clears throat> so what also came out um, the same time as these figures were released was um, the Legacy Collection. Now, the Legacy Collection, I, I believe, was around for a while already. And, you know, doing vintage cards was nothing new back then. They were still doing them, but... The Legacy Collection pre pretty much encompasses the three and three quarter figures that were more realistic um, and hi more highly articulated. And this is the General Grievous. And these were fun too because uh, these were build a droid. So, you, like, depending on the figure you got, it's almost the same concept as a build a figure. Uh, you you know you might get an arm or leg or a head. And then you can like fully assemble. And in this case, MBRA7 was a droid you could assemble if you got all these different figures in the line. And some of the Legacy Collection figures down the road, they'd come with also these things called weapon lockers. And it was a cardboard foot locker. And inside of it, they'd just cram in like a dozen free like blasters and everything. Because, I mean, it, these figures were for kids and kids lose their guns. So it was awesome that you got this little foot locker and you'd get like a you know, like a dozen free weapons just in case you lost, the, you know, the ones that came with the figure. So, man, this was such a, it's like I said, this was such a cool period of time for me to be collecting. This package is awesome. There was some slight confusion, though. I, I saw this at the stores all the time. 
Um, sometimes the retailers would accidentally mix and match these on the same shelves and pegs because when you look at them from a distance, they almost seem very close to each other. They're both the shape of trooper helmets. It's only until you look closer that you see this has the rangefinder and it's, this says the Clone Wars, whereas this one says the Legacy Collection. But the color schemes are very close to each other. The graphic design on the bottom is very similar. Yeah, um, I'm stoked. Uh, these, these figures here, they really take me back. I, I mean, I'm so happy I found at least two of them. I was so disappointed when I saw these uh, debuted online on like Instagram on the I think it was like the Hasbro page or Hasbro Pulse page, and I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna get those. I'm gonna lose out to all these collectors who probably never even watched the Clone Wars and were even collected during this time period, and I was all bummed out. And I know I kind of sound entitled or an elitist when it comes to this kind of stuff, but it's like I said, you know, there was a period of time when a lot of people weren't collecting Star Wars figures, and it was guys like me who would hit up the, the Toys R Us's at 10 a.m. on Saturdays, and you go there and all these figures would be, still be sitting on the shelves because Star, Star Wars wasn't as hot as a toy property then as it is now but i don't mean it it's not like it was dead it, it's just, like i said it just has its peaks and valleys its highs and its lows and there's just a period of time when star wars wasn't fashionable to collect people weren't fully on board with the clone wars cartoon yet people didn't really like the weird um animated figures because some of them i mean the articulation wasn't the greatest and before i forget i actually have some with me so uh, these figures are awesome. I love these figures. I'd troop build these until like I ran out of money. <laughs> I'd buy so many of these clone troopers and I'd make customs. I'd make up new characters and I just have, I have a, I have a tote in the house where all it is is this clone troopers from the Clone Wars line and they're awesome. So here's, um, uh, so this is a later figure. This is Captain Rex in his phase two armor and you can tell that by the helmet. I was excited for this figure, but it was kind of disappointing because you couldn't remove his helmet. And uh, that the, at, this, at this point, some of the figures were, they started limiting the articulation. Like his arms could still move, they could still go out, and he has elbow and swivel and stuff, and waist. And it's cool that you could even store his pistols in his holster. But there was a certain point when they started taking away some of the articulation, and his legs, they lost the knees, and he could like kick up. But at the same time, some of the figures that came previously to that, they had more articulation. This is a custom I made. Um, I gave him the 500 first colors. This is, I believe, a, a Commander Cody head. But I think it was on a Captain, a, a first wave Captain Rex body, which I think is this one. So it's this figure's body, but with a Co uh, Commander Cody head. And uh, I added a wash to give it more detail. Looked a little bit more like Battle Worn. But the articulation on this is fantastic. His head rotates on a ball joint. The arms rotate and they go out. Uh, the arm, elbow swivel, everything. The waist. And then his legs, they could bend. The knees could bend and they could, tw they could twist. And he has ankle articulation. So this is what, if, you, if all you know is the Star Wars Black series... And the Legacy Collection, or I mean the Vintage Collection, it's like, it's nothing new. The Vintage Collection isn't anything new. They were doing high, like, super articulated Star Wars figures, like, years, years, years ago. And, you know, for the people that really appreciated these toys, we loved it. And the minute Hasbro took it away and just gave, went back to five-point articulation, specifically more so when they... Um, Disney acquired the property and they gave us Star Wars Rebels, a lot of figures just went back to the... Five points articulation. A lot of people were kind of disappointed. Me, not so much because m most of the figures they were releasing at that time period were characters I already had. And uh, I don't know. So here we have the, a, a version of a clone pilot. Um, it's different from Captain Hawk, but you kind of get the point. Um, he has a different helmet. He has the rebreather in the chest chest box. Um, here we have a arc trooper. Um, I don't know if this is a specific trooper in general or if this is a generic one. I want to say this came in a multi-pack uh, that might have had at least three or four different troopers in it, I think. Uh, this is great. He has a holsters on both sides that houses pistols. 
He has his battle comma. He has the pauldron. The rangefinder, and this rangefinder actually moves. Removable backpack. And this is a little piece of history. So I, I want to say, I think this is... So this is Echo as an ARC trooper. And this was Echo when he was just playing infantry. And I think this is his first figure. Um, the helmet's removable. He has the hand stamp. I think that was given to him by Rex. Uh, this action figure, I believe, came in a two-pack with Commander Cody, I think. And this is, I believe, Echo's debut action figure. And it's crazy to think that this guy debuted so long ago and he's exists now on the Disney Plus cartoon. So he went through so many different iterations. First he was debuted as this. And I think even prior to this, I think he had um, a different uniform. He might have had the, was it the training outfit? Like for the new, the newly, um, the new clones on Kamino. They, they have those like training outfits, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. And then he later graduated to like you know his phase, um, to his phase one clone armor. And then down down the road, some some seasons later, you know he was in his arc trooper armor. And this is phase two. Whoa, it's like thirty minutes in. Okay, I didn't expect this video to run that long. Um, it ran pretty long for a review where I didn't even open up the action figures. So let's wrap this up. Um, how do I rate these figures numerically? Okay, just to be fair, since I didn't open them, um, you know, I can't give them like a full-fledged review, but in terms of nostalgia and what you pay for, you're going to get a lot of a lot of your money. You're going to get good uh, you get a lot of bang for your buck with this guy. This guy's a lot of accessories. This guy's worth 25 bucks hands down. This guy is kind of like he's cool uh, mostly because of the, the 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 new ah, the newly sculpted helmet and chest piece is cool. I believe the figures feature a lot of reuse from some of the previous Black Series figures. Like here's um, Black Series Captain Rex. And I think they share the same mold. Uh, if I'm wrong, just correct me down below. But I think they're essentially almost the same figure. You know, barring exception of the head and the accessories. But I think the for the most part, a lot of it's reuse. I think. Uh, it looks like the... I take it back. I think the... Yeah, I take it back. This might be a new fig. Yeah, this is a this is a new mold actually. Uh, I take it back. the The gauntlets are thicker than Captain Rex. The elbows are different. The belt is different. I'm not sure about the upper torso, but yeah, you're getting some new pieces with this figure, so it's well worth it just for the fact that it's a, a new mold altogether. Yeah, so this figure, I mean, if you're a fan of the clones and you need to build up your clone army and all the specialized characters and unique characters, this is these are must purchases. This guy's easily a nine. This guy's about seven and a half to an eight. Um, they're worth your money. Good luck finding them. And I don't know, not much else to say. So to wrap things up, my name is Lou. If you were like me and... Uh, Either you grew up during this time period or you're collecting toys during this Clone Wars era. You know, if I hope you have the feels like I do and that these figures take you back. If you missed out on collecting during this time period or if you're too young to remember any of this, I hope this kind of piques your interest in searching out some of these older figures. Um, just because they're not six inch figures doesn't mean they're any less quality. Uh, they're great figures to have. If you don't have a Star Wars three and three quarter collection, I suggest you start, even if it's just a small one. You know, whether you collect characters just from the original trilogy, the sequels, or you just want clones or Mandalorians or whatever, just you know, start a, a collection of three and three quarter figures. You won't regret it. Oh, so I don't know. I was probably speaking a million miles an hour, and I was probably rambling, and I don't know. But this time period of Star Wars is very special to me, and I hope that you found this insightful and useful if not i apologize and maybe next time i'll have the balls to actually open these so i hope you enjoy your day feel free to visit me anytime take care